I'm slightly uncomfortable. You make me very comfortable. So do you guys. What's up? Welcome to Haunt News. It's a Tuesday. It's a, it's a Tuesday of days. Let's talk about my screw-ups yesterday. Hey, fun fact, that first crime that was committed in space, I was talking about the astronaut lady who did it, wasn't against her husband, it was against her wife. So, my bad. Cognitive biases? I just read into the story what I thought was there. My bad. Let's, let's move on, okay? Let's move on into today, where we're gonna have more news that you're gonna like after I tell you about today's video sponsor, Floatplane. Except for they don't sponsor us. You sponsor us when you sign up for a float plane subscription. Have you ever thought to yourself, damn, Hot News and UFD Tech have way too many ads? Well, no you haven't, first of all. And then secondly, if you don't like the ads, float plane, you get no ads because you pay for that. No sponsor spots, nothing. And you get pre-release content. We put videos out there early. Hot News is a couple hours early since we produce it all on the same day. UFD Tech videos are at least a day or uh, longer there for you to consume and enjoy. And again, with no sponsors, cost you $5 a month, bit rates are better than here on YouTube, you get all of the features that you could possibly want, and it just looks better, it's gorgeous. We shoot in 4K, you could actually experience the 4K of everything, except for we shoot in 1080p, but the 1080p bit rate of Floatplane is close to the 4K bit rate of YouTube. Anyways, it's neither here nor there. Sign up at the link in the video description. I talk for way too long, I'm so sorry. Let's talk about something that's gonna make you sorry if you were thinking, hey, you know what, I'll upgrade later. You know, is gonna be around forever, right? Well, if this lawsuit actually uh, goes through to the fullest extent that it possibly could, NVIDIA might not be able to sell in the United States any longer or Germany because Global Foundries has filed patent infringement lawsuits against TSMC uh, in the US and Germany in multiple different courts for multiple different violations with multiple companies being claimed as infringing on the patents with your big boy NVIDIA being included. But that's not it. You got names like Apple, Asus, Google, Lenovo, OnePlus, and Qualcomm also being included on the Global Foundry's lawsuit. And they cite the specific patents that are being infringed upon, and if it's followed through, could mean that NVIDIA would have to find a different producer for its GPUs in order to sell them in the United States, or TSMC and Global Foundries would have to come to some sort of settlement in order to make it work. Obviously, that is keeping in mind that the Global Foundries lawsuit is indeed uh, relevant in the first place and that it actually is gonna hold water when it's brought to court. Now, you might be wondering amongst those lists of names, where's AMD? Nope. Well, you see, my friends, AMD is actually on TSMC's seven nanometer technology and Global Foundries actually doesn't have any seven nanometer technology. They bowed out of the race, I believe last year, and that's why AMD actually ended up switching over to TSMC. However, they still use Global Foundries for the 12 nanometer IO die that's included in Zen 2 chips. And a lot of the technology that's being claimed as being infringed upon is the 12 and 16 nanometer nodes, uh, 12, 14, and 16 nanometer nodes that NVIDIA is using that Global Foundries is saying TSMC is infringing upon. So that's all of NVIDIA's current offerings. So unless they scale down to seven nanometers soon or they go with Global Foundries for their production, it could look like that there might be some hiccups in how NVIDIA might be able to bring their graphics cards to market. This also would affect people like Apple with their ability to bring out their chips, although they are actually on seven nanometers now, so it might just affect older models such as the iPhone 8 and the like. I believe the 10 was also on 12 nanometers. I don't think they hit seven nanometers until the XS. We'll see how this lawsuit goes. We'll keep you updated on it and we'll let you know if there's any pretending, pretending? Potential pending doom coming down the pipeline, which speaking of pending doom, you know how Jensen said that it would be stupid to buy a graphics card without ray tracing hardware built into it? Well, apparently the latest rumor is that even though it's stupid, it still makes money. So we're gonna release a GTX 1650 Ti in October to take that sweet cash from you because who cares if it's stupid, our customers are stupid and that just makes us a ton of cash. Woohoo! Okay, and then 3 d Mark has unveiled a new benchmark for variable rate shading, so you can test your GPU and whether or not it could do that. Right now, it actually only works on Turing-based GPUs or an Intel Ice Lake CPU with Gen 11 graphics. Those are the only GPUs that can support 
variable rate shading. AMD has no support, Pascal has no support. So it's kind of a weird benchmark. It's also the same as when they released the PCI Express bandwidth test when AMD was showing off PCI Express 4.0. The variable rate shading shows that Nvidia is superior. The PCI Express bandwidth test shows that AMD is superior. Basically it means get your Nvidia GPUs while you can before they're all gone. Then let's talk about something that never was gonna exist, but then actually really now exists, but a lot of people think it's scammy, and I mean, there's good reason for it. Anyways, I'm talking about the Smack Z handheld device that was unveiled years ago. I believe it had a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo as a crowdfunded campaign, and it's basically a portable gaming handheld that is run Windows, so it's like a freaking, you know, portable PC. However, there was tons of delays, years of not coming out. It should have been out for a while now, but it appears that they partnered with AMD about a year and a half ago, and AMD has made the push to actually get this thing out on the market, and they're announcing that they have several different options for the configuration, including up to Vega 11 graphics, Vega 8 graphics. Basically, this thing is gonna be like having a Ryzen 5 3400G in the palm of your hand with decent battery life, uh, Steam controller-based controls, which is kind of weird, and then uh, up to a lot of RAM. It's kind of like everything about this looks like it's good. It doesn't look like vaporware anymore. AMD has been co-exhibiting with them at various trade shows. So it looks like it could come out. And as long as they actually fulfill all, all the orders that they had on crowdfunding, even with people who might've pulled out, the best thing would to actually be to ship them one anyways, because they were with you for so many years and you might've bamboozled them with the technology that didn't exist at the time. But thanks to AMD coming out with their embedded Zen stuff, you could actually pull it off that just makes sense to me. But who am I but a lowly man shouting news at the camera. But you know what I'm gonna shout now? Conspiracies, because the Air Force has a secret space plane and it's still up there watching us and they denounced that it set a record for number of days in orbit. It's been up there for 718 days. That is nearly two years. It has been up there for two years and nobody knew about it. How many are they launching now, two years later, that are just gonna be constantly monitoring us, okay? The Space Force is real. We need to stop criminals in space. I understand that that lady committing identity fraud is bad, but stop with your secret space planes, please. In all seriousness, it's kinda cool. And then let's talk about something else I didn't know about, and that's Netflix DVD shipping service. Not saying that I didn't know about it, I actually used to use it when I lived in the United States. However, I thought it died, like a while ago. I didn't think it died when they switched over to Quickster, albeit now that actually looks like it would have made more sense to call it something completely different so I wouldn't conflate the two, but Netflix DVD service has shipped five billion physical discs. They just passed the five billion mark, and if you wanna know what the fifth billion one was, Rocket Man. I'm thinking of changing my name to Elton. But that's my name. Yeah, I know. Are you using Netflix DVDs? Let me know down below how many people are actually on this thing. Then let's talk about Instagram. Because, you know, it's not good enough to, to have direct messaging in your app. I mean, who wants, I mean like Facebook. Facebook was like, no, you need Messenger on a separate app. But I just want to use it in my Facebook app. No, you need it on a separate app. Well, Instagram's doing the exact same thing with a new app called Threads. Why does Instagram just Hard pass. This bull, this is baloney, let it go, die. Fiery death, I don't need this. DM me on Instagram, I won't read it, I won't care, and I can just be okay not installing another app where I won't read or care about those either. And you know what Apple doesn't care about? You being able to jailbreak your phone, because we reported, I believe it was last week, about how the latest iOS update re-enabled jailbreaking on iPhones. Well, it's gone now. Sorry for your fun that you had for a couple days. It's gone. You know what else is gone though? Meat, especially in KFC, one restaurant location. Anyways, they're testing out a Beyond Meat chicken. Kentucky Fried Not Chicken, KFNC, chicken is what this is. I'm actually really interested to try Beyond Meat. I just have to find a place that actually serves it. Reese says that there's a couple places in Joburg. Pretoria too. Pretoria, okay, maybe we, I'll try it out at one point. Let's go get Beyond Burgers at some point, okay? And you know what we're also gonna get? Moon. We going to the moon again, because NASA has unveiled their new moon landing supercomputer, which actually is kind of pathetic when you just compare it to a specific YouTuber. Oh yeah, Sir Linus Sebastian of Linus Tech Tips, because this, uh, this supercomputer that they have, Aitken, only has 221 terabytes of storage. 
Linus has already run out of a petabyte. This is pathetic. You think you can land on the moon with that? Linus can't even go to the moon. He's too short. All right, and then let's talk about some uh, Huawei US stuff, which constantly is being updated and I can never keep straight what the heck's happening. Apparently there's a new ban coming out because China implemented more tariffs on $25 billion worth of goods and so Trump was like, okay, we're playing this game. And Huawei is apparently looking to work with RISC-V as well as Ascend chips for all of their development going forward because uh, companies like Arm, even though they're UK based, are following the US embargo structure. So you get Huawei developing their own stuff. And then it looks like potentially, possibly, there might be an Overwatch port coming to the Nintendo Switch if this officially licensed Nintendo Switch case is any indication. It could be an indication of a game coming to the Switch or it could be an indication of people's greed. Probably that. File Classic launched. Everybody's playing it. Apparently there were so many people that uh, Blizzard had to add extra servers because just too many people trying to play WoW Classic. Reese, do you have it downloaded? I did. Good, keep it that way. I'm not losing you again. And then Assassin's Creed Odyssey is apparently getting its first major DLC and it's gonna be free on all platforms, PC, Xbox One, PS4, and probably Google Stadia when that launches. So there you go. And in case you uh, don't like the government interfering in things, such as your YouTube watching. Well, YouTube is rolling out finally uh, labeling videos whether or not they've actually had funding from government sources. This has applied to things such as like CCTV. They're funded in whole or part by the Chinese government, but it also applied to the BBC because it's the British Public Service Broadcast. Uh, I know that's not what BBC stands for. I was saying what it is. Okay, okay, okay. I know, I, I know it's an acronym, chill. I know people get triggered by that. Speaking of more acronyms, DEA, CBD, yes, because the Drug Enforcement Administration had talked a little bit more about CBD yesterday when it came to uh, its legality. And this is something that's actually really personally relevant to me. We talked about yesterday, my son's genetic disorder and with his epilepsy, one of the things we're looking into is CBD oil in order to treat it. However, one of the biggest issues that you get with CBD oil is that you find local growers who actually have no idea what the hell is in that oil and what the THC to CBD content is because having too much THC in the CBD can actually not be good for developing child's brain and not have the, the effects that you're looking to have for at least helping epilepsy. But the US uh, Drug Enforcement Administration is saying that anything that has less than 0.3% THC will be legal and it's totally okay, even though the DEA registration is not required to grow or research them. Which, I mean, the, the biggest thing around here is if it's legal, that means that there could be more sustainable means of actually testing and controlling the substances and making sure that everything's fine in the freaking batch that we're getting and not getting something that's 30% THC instead of 0.3% THC, which is what happened because we asked how much THC is in here? And they were like, I don't know, like it's three to one, something like that. Can we need 30 to one friends? Thank you. 30% was way too high for three to one. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. That's my percentages were off. I'm, I'm spitballing here. Anyways, CBD control being legal, actually good for a lot of diseases and controlling them. Not for everything, and it's not a cure-all. And in fact, there's a lot of evidence out there suggesting that CBD actually won't work on some epilepsy patients. So it's something that you just gotta work into your regimen, not something that's necessarily a cure. Anyways, you know what's gonna cure this episode of Hot News, me talking about this last article, which is that there's gonna be a flaming Hot Cheetos movie. It's what you've always wanted, okay? Directed by Eva Longoria. What? Yeah, yeah, from uh, Devious Maids, or she was also in Desperate Housewives, was it? Anyways, apparently it's gonna be about the flaming Hot Cheetos creator and his story of actually getting that to Frito-Lay and like creating something that a lot of people love. So it actually might be a decent movie, even though flaming Hot Cheetos movie doesn't sound like it when it rolls off the tongue. And what's coming off my tongue next is it's the end of hot news. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Don't forget to check out whatever I said was the sponsor today, Float Plane. Go check us out down there. Link below, you can support us directly by doing that. We give you earlier uploads as well as sponsor free content. So do that. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our hot news related stuff. And that's it, I'm, I'm out of here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Goodbye.
I clap like a clapping pepper. Reese turns on them there lights. Oh thank, oh, thank you, Reese. You know, you a beautiful man. 